Gerald Lyons, if you were looking for optimism and for signs of what will boom, what would you look at? Well, I think one needs to be very open minded about future possibilities. When one looks at the world of work, it's not just the immediate legacy of COVID. Is also the need for the UK economy to be growing at a fast pace. But many of the features and factors that we're now talking about were issues that were in place prior to the COVID crisis. And you almost have the two extremes, the sort of dystopian view where workers at all levels are going to be surplus to requirements. And then at the other extreme, sunlit upland, so to speak, where all sorts of jobs are actually going to actually become better, monotonous jobs going. The reality is probably going to be somewhere in the middle. So in terms of answering your question, when we look at technology and artificial intelligence, the change is going to be competitive in the sense that routine jobs are likely to be displaced, whether they're routine manual jobs or routine cognitive jobs. But what's very important is that artificial intelligence and technology is also going to have a very strong complementary aspect to it. So in answer to your question, Nick, it's not so much about double guessing what sorts of jobs will be there. The key issue that was evident prior to COVID was that it's tasks that are likely to change. Within all jobs, there's a sort of heterogeneity of tasks. Some of those will be able to be replaced. So we can use technology to complement what we do. If you think of your own job or many of our, or your listeners years ago would have asked someone else to type things out. Now we do that online far quicker. The key issue is rather than pinpoint the jobs that will be there, is recognise that we all need to be developing skills and training and to be more flexible in our outlook. That leads very much on to the whole issue about foundation skills, transitional skills and lifetime learning skills. Some of those will be very specialised. So it's about making sure we create the environment where people have the ability to cope with change and that employers and employees are comfortable with that. And the big challenge is that most people don't like change, particularly if there's a lot of uncertainty about what lies ahead. Mm. Well, you've done your best to give us some causes for optimism. We'll have you back to talk about exactly what the government might do in the future to help create such a world. Stephanie Flanders of Bloomberg Economics, Dr Gerald Lyons of the Policy Exchange Think Tank. Thanks for joining us.